Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So the revert mod has become more relevant than ever just recently because of a new development. Firstly, of course, the revert mod, if you don't know what this is, basically it's possible to actually revert a PS4 back to the previously installed firmware. So whatever firmware you were on before you updated, you can revert back to that firmware in most cases. Now, this is relevant for two reasons. First of all, anybody on 12.50, for the most part, should be able to revert their console back to a jailbreakable firmware, 12.02 or lower, uh, which is great. The other big deal is that it's recently been discovered, or made public anyway, that it's also now possible to get those free Lua game demos that can be used to run the jailbreak. You can download them on the latest firmware, and then when you revert back to a jailbreakable firmware, you'll be able to use those Lua demos to run the jailbreak without having to buy one of those physical copies of the game imported from Japan. So that is why the revert method has just become a lot more exciting. So I've done a full tutorial on how to set up the revert mod. It's not a trivial process. Uh, a lot of people send their consoles off to mod shops or repair shops to get this done. In my case, I did a whole tutorial showing how I set up my own uh, revert mod as like a permanent hardware mod on the console. And that's the console I'm going to be using here to demonstrate this process. But obviously, I'm not going to, you know, show how to wire everything up again in this video because I already have a full tutorial that shows that, which will be left down in the video description. So if you're already on firmware 12.50, for instance, and you managed to get the Lua game demos when that was the latest firmware, then you can basically use this to revert back to a jailbreakable firmware, your previously installed version, so that you'll be able to use those games to run the jailbreak when you're back on the older firmware. That is the idea. If you're already on a jailbreakable firmware, like in my case, I'm on 12.02 right now, Let's say I don't have one of the Lua games that I can use to run the jailbreak, but I do have the revert mod set up. Then what I can do is I can update to 12.52 or whatever the latest firmware is, download the Lua demos for free, and then revert back to the previously installed firmware that was jailbreakable so that I can use them to run the jailbreak when I'm back on 12.02. So that's what I'm going to be doing here in this video. Now, ideally, if you're going to do it that way, you should really back up your Syscon and your Norflash while you're on the older firmware before you update. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and update straight to 12.52 and then revert once I have the Lua game demos. Okay, so now we're updated to the latest firmware, currently 12.52. So we can go ahead and access the PSN store now to download the free Lua game demos. And I've also gone ahead and signed into my Japanese account, which can be used to get the Lua game demos. If you don't know how to create a Japanese account on your console to get the free demos, then again, I have a video on that, which I will leave linked below in the description. So essentially what we want to do here is first of all, download the Lua demos on 12.50. So what we'll do here, we'll go to search on the PlayStation Store and we'll go ahead and start downloading the demos. So we want Hamadashi Creative Demo. So we'll go ahead and grab this and download it to our PS4 here. So the other games you can get are Fuyu Kiss, IX Shitel, and Jinky Resurrection, the demo versions. Any one of those can be used to load the jailbreak, but you only need one of them to be able to load it. But we'll go ahead and just install all of them here just now. So there we go. So you can run each one of the demos, just make sure they're all working, at which point we should be all good. So if we head over to our settings, we want to go to account management and make sure we activate as your primary PS4 for the account. So for the Japanese account that you're using to actually download the games, you want to make sure it's activated as your primary PS4. As you can see here, it says this PS4 is activated as your primary. If yours isn't, then make sure you select the option to activate here at the top and make sure it is activated as your primary uh, console for the account. Okay, so once that's done, we can go ahead and turn our console off. And now we just need to revert it back to the previously installed firmware. Okay, so I've got my revertible PS4 here. So to get it ready for the revert process, I've just got this switch on the top, which I just need to flick to on so I switch all three of these little uh, switches to on here and then if I remove the kind of cover plate you will actually be able to see the chip itself which is just a TNC 2.0 plus plus with a few modifications to it here that allow it to read and write to the syscon and the NOR chip so all I have to do is plug in a USB cable into that TNC between obviously the computer and the TNC itself on the PS4 and we should be ready to read and write to it. Again, I have a full tutorial on how to set up this mod from scratch, which again will be left in the video description if you want to you know, see how to kind of create your own 
uh, essentially mod chip for the PS4 to revert it. Okay, so the tools I'm using for this are the Syscon writer from Ab Carino and CGYCNQ and the PS4 Wii tools from Andy Man Dev, which are both free pieces of software to do this. And I also need the Teensy.exe, which is the programmer to program the Teensy, so I can read and write to the Syscon and the Norflash. So I'm going to open that up first of all, and then open up the Syscon writer, go to the hardware, Teensy 2.0 plus plus, take the hex file and drag it into the programmer, and then press the button on the TNC to enter program mode, and then click the program button. And then once it's programmed, we can hit reboot. And now it's ready to read and write to the Syscon. So I can now go to the PC folder and open up the PS4 Syscon application. From here, I can go to dump the full Syscon flash and click the three dots to browse. And the location I'm using for this is just gonna be the PS4 Wii Tools folder. And we're gonna call the file Syscon and press enter. We're gonna take two Syscon dumps to make sure that they are the same so that we have good dumps of the syscon. So we want to take two dumps and then it will compare them to make sure they are identical. Okay, so files are identical, process done successfully. So we have good dumps of our syscon. So that's the first step done. So next we're gonna go back onto our Teensy Flasher. I'll go into the PS4 Wii tools this time and go to Assets, Hardware, SPI Way. And then I'll take the hex file for the Teensy for the NOR Flasher and put that on and press the button to uh, enter programmer mode, program the Teensy, reboot. And now we are ready to write to the NOR flash or read from the NOR flash first. So now we're going to run the run.bat to open up the PS4 Wii tools. If it's the first time using this application, you'll need to use Python. So make sure you install Python. And then there's two modules to install using the pip installer. So you can use pip install py serial and py crypto dome, I believe. So those are the two modules that are needed to get this working. So once you have this application loaded, we're going to use option three which is to flash using SPI way. So we're gonna select that option and then select option one for COM port. And we can see it identifies the NOR chip. So it looks like everything is good. And we'll use option one to read all, to read our NOR flash. And then we just wait for this to complete. Okay, there we go. So the dump is complete. We're gonna do it a second time. Again, it's the same thing as the Syscon, take two dumps and then compare them to make sure they are identical. Okay, so now that we have two dumps of the NOR flash, we can use option S to select a file. And we can see them showing up here as number seven and eight. I'll use option C to compare the files in the current folder. And we can see that these two dumps here for the uh, NOR flash have the same hash, which means they are identical. So we have good dumps of our NOR flash as well. So now we can basically select number seven, which is one of the dumps of our NOR flash. And you can see it loads up the information about the console here, showing the board ID as 1216B. It's important to note that down. We can also see our active firmware is showing as firmware 12.52, which is also good. Now UART is currently on, so if it's off for you, use option one, and then one again to turn UART on. Obviously it's already on for me, so I'll just do it again to make sure that is on, and then zero to go back. And now we're gonna use option four to switch core OS slot for firmware revert. So we'll select option four, and then these are the different slot switch patterns. So obviously I'm on a 1216B console that we identified before. So for me, it's going to be one of these two. I think the last time I reverted, I used option three. So this time it will be option four to switch back. So I'm going to use option four here. It says save as a separate file. Y for yes. Flash this to the IC. We'll say yes to flash it to the NOR flash. And then one to select our USB serial device. And then option three for PS4 core OS switch. We'll press enter and that will write that section to the NOR flash. And you can see that is now done. So that's everything we need to do to the NOR to switch it over. So now we can go option one to the file browser. And now we'll select our syscon, which is option 10. And then we'll use option two, which is for the auto SNVS patch. And then we want to select method A, which is option one, which is the last four records will be deleted. Now, the, some of these other options can actually override the licenses on the syscon, which is why you don't want to use the other ones for the most part. Option A should be fine. Option B might work, I'm not sure, but option A is the one that uh, definitely works. So I'm going to use option A, so number one, and press enter, and that creates our syscon patch. So now we should be good. We can go ahead and simply quit out of the PS4 Wii tools. We don't need to use this anymore. We've got everything done. And now we just need to basically flash the syscon patch back over which again, we can do by opening up the Syscon writer. Just first of all, getting the hex file copied back over to my Teensy. And we'll go ahead and program that back on so that we can use the Syscon writer. And you can actually use the PS4 Wii tools to write to the Syscon as well. 
but I'm just used to using the official application here. So that's what I'm going to use. And then we're going to use the syscon process of writing the syscons NVS and SNVS only. Select that option and then browse for the syscon patch that you created in the Wii tools. We're going to open that up, verify after write and then start. And that's going to write that section to the syscon. And bam, we can see it is now done. So at this point, we can go ahead and unplug the USB cable and flick the switch on top of my console to off to disconnect the Teensy. So now we can plug the console back in and try and turn it on. And if it boots us straight back into the, the home menu, like nothing happened, then obviously you used the wrong uh, slot switch option for the NOR flash. So you have to use, I used option four. So maybe I'd have to use option three instead if that happened. Otherwise, if it's done correctly, it should boot you into safe mode. One other thing that's needed when reverting is a recovery firmware for the firmware that you're reverting to. So I'm reverting back to 12.02. So I need to download a recovery firmware for 12.02. So I'm using this website here. There's a few different sites you can use to download older firmware versions for the PS4. I'll leave them in the description. But basically, we need to download a recovery firmware, not a retail firmware here. So I'm going to go to the recovery firmwares list for 12.02, which, which is the firmware I'm reverting to. And I'm going to go ahead and download that right here. So once I have it downloaded, I need to put that on a USB drive that's formatted in XFAT format. We go to the root of the USB drive, right click and create a new folder called PS4 in uppercase characters. Inside that folder, we create another folder called update, also in uppercase characters. And then we copy the update file into that folder. So we'll just copy it in. And then once that's copied, we need to make sure it's renamed correctly to ps4 update.pup in uppercase characters and make sure you go to view show and show file name extensions so that you can ensure the file name is correct ps4 update.pup and then you should be all good to go so at that point we can unplug our drive and plug it into our ps4 okay so when we boot up the ps4 after slot switching you can see it just takes us straight to safe mode it says to connect the dualshock 4 via the usb charge cable so we plug in the charge cable for the controller into the console and then press the PS button. And now it's saying connect a USB storage device that contains an update file for reinstallation of version 12.02 or later. So my previously installed firmware is 12.02. So that's what it wants me to reinstall. So I put the 12.02 recovery firmware on the USB and connected it to my PS4. So I'll just select OK. And it should then reinstall from that update file. And it should start installing the 12.02 recovery firmware which should get our system back on 12.02. Okay, so finally loading back into the console now that we're on 12.02. So if we head back to our settings, we can see we're now on 12.02 firmware back where we were. And we do in fact have the Lua game demos that are still accessible now. So we can basically just run the game. Now, in my case, I already have a save file that I put on a USB drive for uh, the Hamadashi Creative demo to load the jailbreak. So we'll go ahead and I'll just quickly get that save on there from my USB. So save data on USB storage, copy to system storage. And this is the one right here for the demo version. So I'll go ahead and copy that over. And we should be good. Obviously, if you want to know how to create the save file, all of that stuff, I have full jailbreak tutorials on how to set up the jailbreak that you can check out. I'll leave it down in the description or at the end of the video here. But anyway, so let's go ahead and see. Obviously, these other demos should run just fine if we try this one. You can see it should load. Yep, there you go. So the demo is in fact working, but I've put the modified save file to load the jailbreak on this one. So let's go ahead and load it. And we should get the auto Lua loader to jailbreak the console without having to have a physical copy of the game. So here we go. Payload is already up to date and there it is. Gold Hen is now running. So we've successfully jailbroke our console. So I took a console that was on 12.02 and, you know, let's say I did not have a physical copy of the game. I can update to 12.52, download the demos on PSN, then revert while retaining the licenses so that I can then use these demos, these free demos, to then run the jailbreak on the older firmware that I reverted to. So that is the general idea of how this works. Now, obviously, this is not going to be for everybody. Reverting is not a trivial process. The only reason it's trivial for me is because I set up this kind of hardware mod to make it easy to revert on the fly, which again, I have a full tutorial of, which will be linked in the description if you do want to, you know, try and do something like this. 
But generally, you know, for most people, if you want this done, I suspect there will probably be services available on mod shops and repair shops to do this for you to get the Lua demos on there and revert your console. And if you're on 12.50 and you already managed to get these Lua demos back when 12.50 was the latest firmware, then you can just revert back to your previously installed firmware and be able to use them. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.